so it is episode three for the Stopman podcast. We are back, and we have got a new guest on the show today. It is Mister Mawagi, <laughs> <laughs> our coach Dan. Thank you for coming on, Dan Boy. Thank you for having me, man. It's a pleasure. Well, we don't have a choice. You're here anyway for well, a week, it, so yeah. we had to do it. So yeah. <laughs> anyway, let's get rolling with this podcast, right? So. Obviously, everybody knows Dan's our coach, and I don't think talking about that's going to be, well, it's going to be good, but I think going right back to kind of, you know, not really your childhood, but kind of how did you, how was your childhood like? Have you always been interested in weights from a young age, or how did you get into this kind of, you know, lift the coaching side of things from, like, from your childhood? How did it all start off? So, so I've always, like, been involved in sport in some way. I played rugby uh, when I was at school. Um, played reasonably well and then the same as every bloke in a pub got injured could have been good but um, rugby and injuries yeah it just but when I was tra- like, I'd train I'd play for my school and for a club so I'd have two matches a week four training sessions a week and try and get in the gym one of our um, I think is our physics teacher at high school had a Tom Platt's bodybuilding encyclopedia oh, nice. and he gave it to me one day and then that was it I was like I want to train I want to be around weights and like reading about what he did and you know like you're doing your calf raises and it's like pushing this toe down you can feel different bits of your calf I found I was like really into like the around. little bits of stuff because I essentially I'm pretty lazy like <laughs> I'm not going to be a great athlete but I'm into understanding it and how people work and the psychology of it as well. So it's like, as a kid playing sport, like super aggressive in rugby as well, like always wanting to win. And then I sort of (coughs) fell out of that a bit, got injured and then realized it's not up to you. Like you could have the best game and you could still lose. And then sort of drifted away then sort of got into playing guitars and taking drugs for a while and then got into CrossFit because I was I thought I was fat then I was like 130 kilos I thought I was like massive um, so started doing CrossFit um, but when I was taking drugs I jumped off a waterfall and ruptured my ACL, MCL and LCL and shattered the cartilage in my knee so it's like really like bad idea mm. so but, uh, don't try this guys well, why, why did you jump off the waterfall was it for fun or was it for no pure oh, fun like okay, right. three shires head um, in the peak district so it's where three counties join and there's loads of waterfalls mm. and we're just jumping off and got totally off our head like mm. jumped off and yeah landed on a rock and my leg exploded Ooh. Um, and then it was like a two mile walk back to the road as well. Was that enjoyable? I was absolutely stoned. Like I couldn't see. Like I just people were like, Do you want painkillers? I was like, No, I'm just gonna get constantly stoned, like all the way. Mm. Like I could do a few steps, sit down, Jeez. got in the back of my mate's van, lay on the floor and oh, that was it, just ignored it. I thought, Well, I've hurt my leg, like It'll be all right. So see that before you get into like the lifting stuff. See the drugs and all that. Did that come because you quit the rugby? Because you quit the rugby, that not not much to do. You know, you didn't really know where you were going, or was that just a thing? Because all your everyone else was kind of doing it there. And um. So like with smoking, uh, pot and stuff like that. That was just like we're riding BMXs, hanging around with yeah, skateboarders usual, yeah, and stuff like. To do, yeah. And we're at the old. I think it's the courthouses in Northwich in Cheshire. And someone was like, oh, do you smoke? I was like, yep. Mm. And they were like, I was with my mate, and they're like, no, you don't. So, <laughs> no, 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 I do now. And that's it. Uh, so that was like 12 or 13. So I was like, Jeez, still was playing young. rugby yeah. and started like smoking weed now and again. And then it sort of transitioned to, you know, smoking weed and playing rugby now and again to then just smoking weed and playing guitars in really mediocre bands. Oh, that's, uh, 
I suppose it's easy done. Yeah, with the the kind of crowd you kick about with, you say you, you meet one guy, they ask if you smoke. Like, yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah so right. I just may as well say yes because I don't want to be the the guy that says no and looks like a, a wee dickhead. Yeah, so you know, it I just don't know. it was the it probably takes you away from thing. the normal world, didn't it? Like, because yeah, the way you're probably feeling it and stuff is because I've realised like as I've got older, like, my brain just doesn't stop working. Mm. So like with the coaching stuff like that, I've had to message people. I'm like, I've got to set working hours because I'm like, even now, like I'm waking up thinking about like knee wraps or <laughs> the best way we can set stuff up. And like that just doesn't stop. So I think at that time it was just my way of slowing my brain down to like fit into the pace of the world mm. rather than f- trying to find a faster paced world, if that makes sense. And sorry, academically, see when you were in school and stuff. So, like you strike me as quite an intelligent guy. You take everything in. You're a complete anarch when it comes to like strength. And like last night, we were watching Arnold's 2013. We watched Fortissimus the last time. And you knew everything yeah. that was going on. But like academically, did you strive in that? Was that a good thing for you, or was that like a, something that you weren't really interested in? Or? Um, sort of both, mm. which might not be a shock. Mm. Um, mm. So. It was just me and my mum growing up. Mm. She'd have partners, uh, like long-term partners, but like the core was me and my mum. Mm. And she wanted me to go to private school, the same school she went to. Um, She was one of the first students there. Um, But she was like, I want you to go to this school. But I just couldn't really be asked. And in order to do that, my mum had to work all the time. So I was sort of at home, like by myself quite a bit or she'd get home really late you know she was working stupidly hard to put me through this school Um, and I'd ride mini motorbikes around the back garden and (laughs) do what a kid does yeah Um, so I got kicked out of history and like kicked out of a few lessons uh, because I just disagreed with the teachers on stuff (laughs) well okay I can see where that disagreements come from still yeah (laughs) Dan Hipkins disagrees with history yeah (laughs) but it was um, as I I don't want to be in your lesson but I'll just teach it myself and they're like you like you can't do this Mm. I was like no I'm like I'm not going to turn up I'll go and see uh, like our head of year I was like I'll go and see him I'll check in and I'll go and teach myself and I think I ended up getting an A in history at UCSE. So if you need a history teacher, guys, call him. <laughs> Strong man coach slash history teacher. I mean, he's, I'm sick of him after this week for being a coach. You can have him. <laughs> but it was, but like, see, I was good, but not in the world, like in the realm of that school, I wasn't that great. Like I was, I was told not to apply for A-levels. I got all A's and B's at UCSE. But they're like, don't bother applying for A levels here. Wow. Like, we're not going to accept you. Like, all right then. So see where the before all the lifting stuff. Do you know? Like, so autism, yeah. You are got autism, yeah. So yeah, do I don't really know where I sit exactly. Yeah, but obviously with the school stuff as well. Do you know? Did you get diagnosed? Uh, no. no, I had loads of tests for uh, like dyslexia, yeah, yeah. the ADD, like the all the kind of your stuff. Yeah. That, yeah, okay, so that, so kind of school, kind of, because school sounds similar to me, you know, obviously, I didn't get chucked out of classes, you know, because I'm not a bad boy, but, you know, <laughs> I just didn't do, didn't really care much about school, didn't want to do school, you know, the classes, I didn't, I struggled with as well, and, you know, you can relate, relate as well, and obviously, I know you more than Luke's knowing you as well, and being around you and stuff as well, you know, you kind of, Bible stuff, obviously, you being 100 miles per hour all the time, if overthinking things is, a big sign as well and I do that as well so yeah anyway well, let's uh, I think no I think that's a good point what you're saying though like and what Dan was saying about the spectrum as well there's different parts of the spectrum yeah, yeah. you're on you're on like when you were in the school you had like a, a support, support network teacher, and, like, and yeah. what Dan was saying is that almost your uh, spectrum whatever it was you were on made you kind of take away from that support and do it yourself and yeah. you couldn't like function in a group environment as such. Really yeah, you didn't like to. You didn't. Mm. You didn't want help. You just wanted to, like you were. You just wanted to do it yourself. And I mean, look what happened. You got Asia sense yeah. so it helped. You know. So I think I mean, that's um, a big sign of autism as well, because you know you're you're basically 
uh, your what do what's the word? I don't know what you're saying. I'm mate. trying to sorry. Getting A's is a big sign. No, 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 no. I mean like <laughs> not like to say, doing big A's, but like <laughs> going out the class, saying you don't yeah, want to do yeah. the class. I did that, but then you know I went and got support and help and stuff. Yeah. But you wanted to do it yourself, so it's like being over kind of intelligent. You know, like there's there's always something you thrive up in, in school and stuff, and mm. sounded like you thrive more at the kind of those kind of classes instead of sport and stuff. You know, you yeah. want the history and. So like well, I was, I was good at sport, but you weren't really interested. Yeah, in it, when right? it came to like, we'd like normal PE class, it'd be like, oh, we're doing football today, and I'd be like, I oh, don't want to do that. I play rugby. Mm-hmm. But they ended up. It sounds so poncy, but like my Latin teacher mm. was like head of year. He taught classic, like classics and stuff like that, and he said like, you can't play rugby if you don't come to these classes. And that started my like trying in those subjects because yeah, yeah, yeah. he was like, "We'll just take away the thing." Because like you play you pl- pleasure and stuff football to, yeah. for like hours a day and stuff. Yeah, so you'll t- get they'll take away the thing that will help you, yeah, function or something basically. So yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mister, what was his Mister Addison, the guy who. So in the big sports hall at school, there was like a balcony, and that had, you know, like the. Argos dumbbells, oh, like Sandfield dumbbells. Mm. There's like a ten mil bar that was still like stiffer than an axle, like <laughs> just really bad kit. Yeah. But he had these books, and he was like, "This is what like he'd train would push training." And it, he was the first person like who made me realize that you, to do a sport, you need to be like looking at everything. Because our rugby teacher was like, you don't need to train weights. Like, you don't train weights for this. You don't do this. Mm. But, but why? So, so, like that when you saw that Tom Platt's encyclopedia, yeah. that's the start of the journey, was it? You kind of looked into that. That really took your there was something that went off in you. And yeah, cool. I started doing car phrases. <laughs> car phrases through your toe. Like yeah, toe, yeah, toe. like uh, no, it's it's like I go home and do like sets of a hundred car mm. phrases. That's why your cars are so small. <laughs> Overtraining them, you know. That's why it came off. Uh, so, it, I, sorry. So, how did then did you get into? So, obviously, you found this Tom Platt's encyclopedia book, whatever it was. So, then, did that then click to you? Right, I want to do this and learn more about the body and go into like teaching weightlifting so and strongman, whatever it was at the start. So, me and my mate used to go to Dave's gym in Northwich, which was like a proper old school gym. And we had no idea what we were doing. We knew how to train legs because we had Tom Platz's book. <laughs> the best guy to But like legs. nothing else. We mm. just didn't we'd just go in, we'd put as much weight as we could on machines, and we'd essentially try and hurt ourselves mm. and then go and train for rugby. And like we'd be turning up to rugby like we couldn't walk and it was like we've just gotta keep like this is how you train. We thought that was what it was. But like getting into coaching I had like a period of time where I was just taking drugs all the time. Got off that and started working in the quarry. And I was just like really fat and felt awful. Mm. And when I was about 16, 17, I was living with my sisters in Birmingham and got into like mountain biking and taking pictures of mountain biking for some magazines. And some of the people I knew like, they were a bit chunky and then all of a sudden they looked like shredded and I was like what are you doing oh it's this thing called CrossFit and this was like you know CrossFit's just circuit training but it, you know, this was when it was first coming over here as like a thing so I found a local CrossFit gym and started training again and then realised like I saw stuff differently but then started coaching out of there <laughs> So it's just like got same way I got into strongman was I like, I went to watch Paul Smith compete because I knew him through doing my weightlifting qualification and there was an event I can't remember what it was but I said like why is everyone doing it like this like this is the best way to do it <laughs> and he won the event and was like you need to come to England's in three months <laughs> and then Britain's and that's it you're my coach now like. I just, yeah, I don't know why. Mm. Just see things weird. Mm. That's, yeah, it's good. That's that's, weird, isn't it? And that's the thing with with the, the strongman, I suppose, stuff that we do, is that 
it's it's still quite a new sport I find you know yeah that's it's ever evolving you know the you look back to twenty years ago when people used to press a log it's completely different to how oh, we press yeah. it now so that evolution of of what we do and especially having you now as a coach what you've kind of taught <laughs> taught us and put into our programs we were calling it, I was calling it yesterday ballerina yeah. bullshit but then you do it and you're like oh this is actually quite sore yeah uh, and you can see. <laughs> Um, the the benefits yeah, of until it you do it you don't know. Yeah. I mean like you know, obviously like I said I've been with you for a while and even when we started I was getting these things like why am I jumping on a box why am I putting my leg in the air and not doing what these guys like looks going in bench pressing and making noise why am I doing all these wee slingy Mr Slingy moves and you know I'm yeah. not wanting to get s- <laughs> we still don't know what these moves yeah, are like, we're talking just, the stripes and the yeah stuff. like you know like isometric holds and stuff all this stuff but then you realise it's going to help you on what you're good at, which is straw man, you know, and you don't really realise until you actually put it into practice and you're like, wow, that felt so much better this week than it did a month ago when mm-hmm. I wasn't doing these. So, yeah, the stuff you do is incredibly weird. Yeah, <laughs> it's just weird hippie shit. Yeah. Like, people, like, everyone, genuinely every person I coach is like, why am I doing all this? And then a few months in they're like hitting PBs hitting one rep maxes for like two or three reps and stuff and it's like like that's a, like it's nothing special like mm. anyone can program the same way I do but it's uh, just getting people to do it and making people do stuff they don't want to do as well yeah like me like yeah <laughs> like you always want to just do the basic stuff but then adding those we like you said putting your toe down for the cast and hitting those different muscles will really help Transfer into the strongman kind of game as well. Yeah. <coughs> so how? So see. So was Paul Smith your first ever client as a first strongman? First strongman, strongman client. Yeah. 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 Hundred percent. So I was coaching, doing like weightlifting classes at the CrossFit gym, doing mobility classes because I've always been like bendy, mm. and then I found like training mobility, you can get more bendy. You're, you're super bendy, geez. So just started doing classes there. And then, so because I injured my knee on the waterfall, we were weightlifting one day and I just didn't warm up, just messing about. And my knee just came out again, um, which was the one where I ended up getting knee surgery and having like my ACL rebuilt and all that sort of stuff. Um, so whilst I was injured, I was just reading more and more about weightlifting and like trying to learn as much as I could and. You know, I was ended up watching like Russian training videos and pausing them and putting the subtitles in Google Translate to see like what are they saying, like why are they doing certain stuff and old like plyometric videos and like Gurna Wunther like jumping up stadium steps and stuff. So you're pretty obsessed with learning Yeah, I just want to know stuff. stuff. Knowing what people are saying, which Yeah. Yeah, jeez. So see after you got your, your operation, the operation how was that then after, you know, the recovery aspect, did you... I was really stupid, I just did it really badly. Oh, right, okay, good. Because I was like, I want to lift, and oh, that's what oh, I want to do. Oh. So I did my uh, British weightlifting coaching qualification at mm. Sheffield Uni, uh, just went up, and the guy who was running it said, why don't you come and lift here? And I needed to get stronger, I needed to get my legs stronger, my knee, like, it's even now it still clicks, because mm. I didn't rehab it properly. Um... <clears throat> And Paul was training there, and I was like, "Well, if I need to get stronger, he's the strongest person here, mm. so I'll talk to him yeah, about yeah. it." And he just said, "Like I'm competing in Newcastle, like come up and watch." And mm. so I was like, "Oh yeah, that was it. Got into strongman. Like I've watched strongman since I was a kid, mm. but that was the first time like going to see strongman and in a car park in near Newcastle in Spennymoor." And then you were with Paul because I remember I was out competing in the Philippines and Paul was out as a reserve and then last minute got a yeah that was awful yeah. that was <laughs> like the peak stress yeah that was um, that was interesting but back then was that you've been up and down with your kind of weight loss journey I suppose yeah so I was my plan was to lose a bit of weight to get to the <clears throat> Philippines because I knew it was going to be hot <laughs> Um, and the last weight I saw on a scale was I think 182 um, 
but I think I put a bit of weight on, like fluctuated around there. Mm. Uh, so like one eighty ish, probably the heaviest I was. And what was the what was the kind of decision then to? Cause I, I've seen you cutting before we we've worked together. I saw you you cut, and that's what made me really feel confident in being with someone like yourself. You know, it's you've you've made that change. You've obviously made a conscious decision to yeah. say, right, enough's enough. I'm going to actually change this around. So was there a, a moment or a time or did you just think, oh, it, I'm, I'm wanting to lose weight? So <clears throat> I sort of just got bored of being fat, mm. but at no point was doing anything about it. And then I uh, started like, seeing Shiv and realised that if I'm really fat and die, that's going to affect someone else. Like, I'd never... Like, I'm, I'm all right with death, generally. But realising, you know, I care about someone, and if I'm really fat, I die from being fat. Mm. Like, I'll fall off a cliff, I'll crash cars. Like, I'm fat, like... If I go doing something interesting, I'm sort of all right with it. <laughs> but if I just die because I'm too fat to be alive... Then it's just like well, I need to need to get my shit together. Yeah, that's probably the worst way you could go. Like, yeah, you're not. You've got a chance to do something cool as fuck and die doing something cool as fuck. Yeah. Or are you gonna die in your bed? Yeah, I'm too fat. fat to do anything. Yeah, it's, yeah because like, when we first met, you were when was that? That was junior level, probably. That was Belfast one. It's a twenty eighteen, yeah. maybe. Yeah, and you were like, like big big back then. Because I, I was on, only I was like one forty five then. Yeah, but you were still like, you know, big. Obviously, you were with Paul, and then I, even after that competition, I knew like, geez, you're a, you're a good coach, but you didn't look like a coach. I thought that obviously coaches had to be, yeah, massly and big. You know, you don't, you should never judge a book by its cover. But obviously, young, and I was like, I had a big fat book. Though, how's this like guy? A cover. How's a, uh, how's this guy? I mean, he's in. I was like, you're in the right sport, but how are you a coach? That's what I was trying to think to myself. And then obviously, because obviously, like I said, I know knowing you more. I've been to more competition because you've been with Paul and we kind of had lots of battles and you know, obviously seen you grow as a coach and then obviously that day where you messaged me saying change my stance in deadlift and yeah. you wanted to work with me I was like well you know let's do it I mean I didn't really have much trust in you I'm going to be honest but then that's what I said you know you should never judge a book by its cover and then you know once we started getting that relationship and then I think obviously then people seen me get stronger Luke seen me get stronger and then obviously you changing as well. You know, you every year can you're with me, you were getting a bit more healthier. And I think, like yeah. you just said, when you met Shiv, probably the best thing could happen to you because you were caring about what other people, how, how like you were wanting to coach other people and get them stronger, but you didn't really care about yourself. You know, you just yeah. wanted to be like, I'm fat, I don't care, but these guys are, my job's to make other people stronger. But then you started caring about your health, which is then, you know, it's going to help you mentally. And, and you know, obviously yeah. now as well with Shiv, you're going to, it's someone you care about, but... It's good that she's probably come now because you know if that was ten years later, you might be I've, gone. I might yeah. even been gone now because you know, like oh, it's been. You were like, yeah, you know, I've seen you at your biggest, and well, not your biggest, but I've seen I was you really at your big. big and like, it was like this guy's you know unhealthy, but obviously you can't say anything because, like you said, you don't care about yeah. being fat, which is. But like people said it, like because I, me and Paul Smith, like shared a flat for a while, and like he said it, like it was brutal, but it's like, mate, you are way too fat. I'm like, nah, I'm alright. Like, I don't care. Like, I took drugs for ages because I didn't care. Like, I, I'm i alright. Like, at the time, I was like, ah, oh, like, whatever happens, happens. Mm. But then you, like, say, like, you realise that it affects other people. Well, there's really cool stuff you can do. Mm. And, like, I think going out to Worlds and, like, Shivlukov, we're stood in the tent. You know where the finals were and it was like in a weird shopping centre place mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or like the final day of the heats maybe when Big Z was when they had log press and the dumbbell and I hadn't spoke to Shivlukov at all and I stood in the doorway of the thing and he just walked up to me and patted me on the belly and went it's uh, like old strongman it's good and just walked off and I was like I don't think that's great <laughs> and that like <laughs> I think Eddie said like after I'd lost weight, he was like, "You were like just turning into Glen Ross. Like, mm. it's not 
that's not a healthy I'm being like weak mm. like it's not like I was pulling 400 like yeah, if you were Glenn Ross strong. I'm yeah, not, like, like, well, I'm strong. Yeah, like Eddie's picture at Europe's or Britain's, whenever it was, like, mm. a big lad, but mm. really strong. But I was just strong man big without the strong bit. <laughs> yeah, you were halfway there. Like, yeah, let's put, that, yeah. put loads of work into the wrong bit. Yeah. So then you're saying that, so how, how long have you and Shiv been together? I think about three years about Three now. years. And she's been a big influence on how you are now and... Um, yeah, we try and influence each other, I mm, think, because mm. she's really, like, emotional right. and affected by, like, stuff. Yeah. And I'm not, because at some point we're all going to die, so what's the point in stressing yeah. every day about it? So it's a good combination. That It works, re- like, 99% of the time it works really well. Mm. And then every now and again we just have to go, wait, we know this works, why are we arguing about it? Mm. Like, You've said a couple of times that Shivel... Um, once we do like, a YouTube video with you, whatever, and she'll send you like comments through. Yeah. Um, what was the one? That, you look like a, a fat lesbian. Yeah. Some of the like, like the comments. I mean, like, to be honest, I, I laughed my head off at that. I was one it's of the really funny, fun, but it's like Dan's a wizard. He's yeah. like done amazing things for the lads. Done this. He looks like a fat lesbian. I'm like, <laughs> that's a compliment at the end of the day because you don't look like a coach like everybody says. You know, like if you walk through a door in a stre- in a gym, and everyone just looks at you like. Who yeah. is this guy? I don't really think like this big PT comes in that's muscly that doesn't know anything. So it's quite cool that like people call you that and they're like, well, you, you, you uh, coach the world's strongest man, you're the strongest man and being successful in your career. So it's been did, cool. Did you say like it was a compliment for Dan to get called a fat lesbian? No, like, I mean, like <laughs> when he looks through them all, like, oh, no. I, like some of the comments, you know, like obviously when you get called like, you look like a hippo, a hippie and stuff. Like that stuff. I mean, <laughs> let's just throw pelters at that. Right, I'll sit here. <laughs> no, but you know when you look, really cool. like, let's go and eat. And <laughs> when you when you look through YouTube videos, like it's like when you see all the good comments are really good, but then you see that one or two ones that like the hating on you. That's the ones you laugh at and like, like oh yeah, these guys are yeah. hating. They're sitting doing maybe a nine to five job, and you're sitting here rolling it with the big guys. So that's Sorry. the ones that are like I would laugh at. I mean, when I got sent the that comment with the lesbian one that was hilarious to be honest with you like, they're really funny and like there's ones like why haven't you cut your hair properly and yeah. all of this I'm just like <laughs> here's <I'm>, hair <laughs> like I get to go to the Arnold this year go to World's Strongest Man drive race cars your hair's the last rocks, thing in your mind and like hair just grows yeah. so what I do is get bored and cut it <laughs> and mullets are cool yeah. in their own way so we'll put a bet on right if one of us wins World Straws Man this year we can get our name engraved into your head mate do what you want they had it here first boys <laughs> but I think so going back to like you and Shiv so like you said Shiv takes things maybe a bit more to heart she's a bit more emotional and you're not but I think what's nice is that when she sees these comments um, she probably gets like worked up and like you're like look doesn't matter. Oh, she replied to one of them. <laughs> like the first video, I came up and someone just went in on me, oh, God. and she started replying, and I was just like, "What are you doing?" Yeah, like, oh yeah, like it's ammunition to them. Yeah, well, and I'm just so. like, but I don't care. Like I'm living like two, three years ago, like my dream life, mm. where I just basically do what I want, and the people I coach collect big shiny trophies, mm. and they've had the time in their life to sit down and go, I'm going to put something negative out into the universe. Like, I'm fine. Mm. Yeah, it's it's mad. So it goes back to, like, in your school days when that private school said, oh, we don't want to take you in for your A-levels. Yeah. If they did, then you probably wouldn't be doing this. You might be doing something else. You I'd have be. been in engineering or yeah, something like that. Yeah, and that's what people want you to do, is, like, fit into that pigeonhole. Right, we're going to do your A levels, and you're going to go to uni. You're going to do this, going to do that. But like, you are probably that's why I love you is because you're very unique. You're not, you don't give a fuck about pigeonholes. You don't care about conforming to what society, whatever society thinks we should be. And I think that's the empowering message. I think from working with you, that I get is that right, you're 180 odd kilos back yeah. in the Philippines. You changed your life around. You were on the drags, whatever, you know, and now you're doing what you love, you know, yeah. so there's not a, a right or wrong path. No, pigeonholes are full of pigeons, like, yeah. 
there's there's no point trying to fit in because nothing gets done if everyone tries and fit in. Mm. You know, even like stuff at Westside Barbell, which people might not agree as as like training methods, the stuff Louis Simmons has put into coaching. Like it just wouldn't exist. Like Terry Todd, who, you know, it gutted we were, I'm not going to be able to meet, but one of the first people to say like, no, you can be strong and athletic. Like to be a strength athlete, half of it is being an athlete, and you know these are people who booked a trend and didn't want to fit in. And you know I'm fortunate to know like Jock Reeve who. And Dougie, like everyone who's done something, has done it by not fitting into a pigeonhole. Mm. I think that's, that's that's very true. I think that's and that's the scariest thing sometimes for people is not fitting in. I know, yeah. from my experience when I was younger, I was very worried about not fitting in, and then you learn, like you do now, you know, you don't care. Like, yeah, I get to do what I we get to do what we do because we don't fit in. It's that's basically what it is, you know. It's yeah, it's pretty mad, you know, lifting cars. I'm not fitting in for a long, long time. So, <laughs> Tom uh, can't fit in anything because he's too big. You know, so. yeah. Like last night, I've got a message on it, Instagram. I forget, I've known years, like five, six years, been really good mates with him. And he just sent me a message like, mate, you realise how mad it is that you're sat having tea with Luke Stoltman? <laughs> and it's like, when you look at it from the outside, you're like, people drove like hours to come up here for mm. the open day I'm like just ring them like mm. it's just Tom and Luke like the sound <laughs> but you realise that don't ring us I'll block your numbers <laughs> if you ring me up. <laughs> but you realise like the view I'm really fortunate enough to get of like you guys and the sport and you know I love Strongman mm. and I get to like Colin Bryce says hello to me mm. like and Eddie Hall knows who I am and like Kaz says hello, like Bill Kazmaier knows who I am and mm. stuff like that. And you just think, we're so privileged to exist in this world mm. that you just can't moan about mm. it. It's very true. It's it's um, <laughs> the world that we live in, in the strongman world, is absolutely bonkers. You know, yeah. <laughs> we get to travel around the place. Like, we'll be competing in Arnold's, you're going to be there. Arnold's yep. is like one of the most iconic oh yeah like competitions ever like we were watching the uh, Austrian Aust- Austrian Oak last yeah. night that's like incredible the the timber frame carry like insane and but you get to like you get to do a max log on mm. the Austrian Oak on the Arnold stage mm. like mm. how's that normal how's that like a sentence that isn't that weird for us to say either? Mm. So, oh, it's, we're just training for Max Log, but it's on the most important log in the sport. Yeah, it's, it's on it's, the stage. Mm. Mad, isn't it? It is pretty crazy. Are you excited for Arnold's Tom? <laughs> I'm very excited. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's bring, get me to the chopper. That's, <laughs> right, is it? That's not bad. That's, That's all right. <laughs> So for you, so your your coaching's going quite well. You've kind of structured that a little bit better. You're saying yeah. you've you've kind of put boundaries in your working hours, so to speak. Yeah, so. I've tried to, but then coaching people, so like working with Travis as well. Which mm. the yeah. fact that that's the sentence, <laughs> like <laughs> I got a message off him the other day, and he's like, I had to change the squat session because I was at Mark Bell's gym and Andre Milanichev turned up, so we just did some extra squats, and I was like. I've never had a better excuse as like a fan of the sport to mm. read that sentence and just go, yeah, do what you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if Milanichev's there, do what he says. But when I'm training, Luke walks in and does that, you say, no, don't do that. If you, I don't ever do that. No, no I'm saying <laughs> it's normally you that no, says that, Mr. One Set. Yeah. Oh, one Set Tommy. <laughs> yeah, help, me, help me win World's Travis, man, so I'm not complaining. Like, uh, but, yeah, so with having people in the States, there's like leeway to it, yeah. but... You know, if someone messages me and it's clearly important, I'll always reply to them. Mm. But if it's just checking in and they don't need anything, then I'm trying to leave it till like the next morning if it's after six o'clock and stuff and have mm. slightly more normal. Hours. But I mean, balance is important, you know, very important. That's yeah. the same with 
as you know, even having this business at first, it was you can get on top of it, but balance is very important. You need to have, you know, even as athletes, you need to have you know that like gym time and then away from the gym, away from the business. You know, weekends for me should do is a really time. Uh, Good time for me just to chill out and you know forget yeah. about everything. Because if you don't, then like you said, you you were you were up in the clouds every day just trying to make everyone happy. You know, reply straight away. You didn't have a life. Probably affected you and Shiv a wee bit as well. Yeah, because yeah. I just always be on. My, like yeah. there was before World Strongest Man. Like I was sleeping on the sofa because I couldn't sleep because mm. I was like constantly thinking like through the events what's going to happen obviously not being able to be there last year as well mm. trying to get in that routine of you changed your body clock as well yeah because like when are you guys going to wake up so I was trying to get a nap in or sleep mm. so I could be awake when you're awake staying up you know had a group chat with Cushy, Sinead Loz and Dale <laughs> and we'd just be you know like Reddit Cushy appeared and mm you seen what so and so said and we'd be like well tell them this <laughs> see him again this year well hopefully be there this year mm. which is going to be nuts mm. <laughs> it's going to be mad this year it's going to be good but with your coaching are you hoping to expand that are you like what's the plans for your future you know it's fine us doing worlds and stuff but you wanting to make it bigger you want to keep it going or, or how does it I'm, I want to so I've started like those generic mm-hmm. programs, which aren't generic programs. They're like training templates. So they come with like a video to explain how to progress it, how to move through, what alternatives you can do, which is probably not great for business because you just sell one and then mm. you could keep that going for ages. But I want to help as many people as I can mm. like through that way. And then with my own coaching, just keep it small mm-hmm. and, you know, live the life I want to live because I you know this year starting uh, racing cars and going climbing more and traveling out to competitions so I'd never want to take on loads of clients and then have to say I can't reply to any of you for a week Mm -hmm. I'm at world's strongest man I'd rather you know keep a smaller base and but there's stuff I want to do like Mm -hmm. I need to put more content out start podcasting again uh, people have asked for merch and things like that, mm. but fundamentally, I'm pretty lazy. <laughs> like, I put if I'm fo- like this year, the performance for both of you two, mm. like that's my that's my business focus as well. Is you know, if we can do something special this year. That's worth more than like more clients or actual money. Yeah. Like driving into this town and seeing you know, home of the Stoltman brothers and stuff, it's like, that's worth way more than the money. Mm. Like you get, you've overstayed your welcome. So get out. (laughs) But I think that's a nice thing to, and I can genuinely see that with you. It's good. Like money money. doesn't drive you. And, and I think a lot of people fall into that mistake. And like, if if you're driven by money, you're probably never going to be happy because you'll never have enough. Yeah. You can always, always want more money. Mm. Exactly, but if you're just wanting to be happy, to do what you love, to you know, and like your happiness is based on almost our success, yeah, which is quite endearing actually, because it's like, like, or it's quite a lot of pressure actually, because we've got to do something, <laughs> or you'll be. No, but it's good that you actually like you know travel up like this because a lot of coaches, like you say, you know, money, they'll be yeah. like, oh, we want an extra, I want an extra whatever to come up and see you guys. You know, you come to all the competition, you 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 make that effort to, you know, you book flights out to Arnold. You know, you. You want yeah, to come I, out and help. I get to do that. Mm. Like, that's the thing. I yeah, get I to go to it. Giants Live. I get to go backstage at Giants Live competitions. And then I have to watch them on telly because I don't have a clue what happened with anyone else. <laughs> but I get to be there. I, I'm fortunate to be able to book flights to go to the Arnold. Mm. Like, the best, like, show I think there is in Strongman. Like, mm. actual, like, one or two day show, like, short hit I, I get to do that mm. I get to like it's an 8 hour drive but mm. once the drive's done I get to sit in the Stoltman Brothers office <laughs> and <laughs> good like, thing about it for is when you go to these competitions you know you're for, you're there for just me and Luke you're not like yeah. kind of like I know there's like oh, like the Bill Kazmaier you're not there just kind of 
trying to talk to him, fanboying over everyone else, and or oh, I want to go out and watch him do this. I want to go watch him do that. Or I'm going to miss Big Z do this. You know, you're actually focusing on us, and you know, like which proves that a good coach. You're like really in. Fested into what me and Luke want to do because we've seen that every competition you do, you, you don't care about anyone else. You're just sitting but, beside us. Like you can miss, you know, like you said, Arnold. You'll probably miss ninety percent of people yeah, lifting, yeah. but it's, you're there for the reason is for well, us. You know, I had to so watch good. Bibby's log press on telly because I didn't <laughs> see it because I think I was getting your uh, sleeves or wraps ready or something like. I don't know what happens. Oh yeah, that's a good sign of because, like you said, another coach might go, "Oh, world record time." You know, I'm just going to go and out and watch this, and then forget that they've got clients and you're kind of like well you know what do we do so it's a good sign that obviously like you're invested in us you want us to do well and you keep wanting us to do well and I think um, it's good so if if um, if any of your coaches is doing that get rid of them because it's not a real coach <laughs> if your coach is there and wanting to watch the no, but like, I've seen no, I know, but I'm just yeah, saying yeah. like get rid of them because the, the coach isn't there for you you're like for, for us like, you are part of us so if you were fucking about doing whatever, yeah, we'd like, tell you. Especially because uh, I mean, like, what you do, you know, you're, you're, yeah. it's, it's very you know, simple. Giant Slive and Arnold's and Worlds are the biggest comps in the world. So a lot of people be like, oh, I'm just going to go over with them, and there's a free pass to then. Mm-hmm. Oh, let's we're out here now. Free, you know, we got everything kind of. But you're like, no, you're just like, like you always go right. You're doing this. You're doing that. Get down here now. You're always planning the day. I mean, you probably got worlds planned out on your phone, and it's in May. I've got, <laughs> like, I'm, I've got a plan for the Arnold. Like, I'm going there early on the Thursday to meet up with the organisers because I've never worked at the Arnold before. So I want to introduce myself. I want them to know that for two, for a few hours over the weekend, I might be an asshole, <laughs> but fundamentally, I only care about how you guys perform. Mm. But I don't want to get in the way. Like, I know at Giants Live where the camera lines are. I know where not to be. Mm. I know who to talk to, who's, you know, who knows what as well. Like, the crew at Giants Live are so good that, mm. you know, you can say, like, when are these lads on? They're like, they're on in seven minutes. And I know that it will be seven minutes. And if it's not, they'll find us straight away mm. and explain why or try and move it so you've made that friendship and you've made it easier for us for that's the thing you've let stress you know you know you literally tell you they never come to us anymore which is a good thing as well yeah we concentrate on doing our things mm. you're like look you dan goes look you're one minute you're up get ready you know so so yeah, anyway like so the big year was 2021 you know so what see when you were kind of prepping us obviously covid and everything well saw his mum was first competition second competition of the year june it was yes so like Head up to World Straws Man and stuff. How did you? What were you like? Like you know, obviously it's probably your two cl- clients going out to World Straws Man. Uh, you've never kind of pr- had two people out there before. I don't think was that your first time. Yeah, first well, time with two people and then, out there. How do you think like programming that and like were you under pressure? Did you think oh this is make or break at my coaching career? Yeah, no, that was like I was saying to Shiv like my whole year's work. It's to this day, yeah. Yeah, it's, I get two dates. Like, the fact we... I always assume whoever I coach is, you're going to get into the final. Mm. Like, that's not a doubt. But my whole year comes down to two days. And that's it. Like, <laughs> if it goes wrong, if you get hurt, if you don't perform, if I've missed something, like, that I should have had you doing up that's a year wasted and like I said to you like if you I I like to think that you know we've worked together for long enough that you could have an off day and we could chat through it yeah and get back but if you have like a really performance I could lose you as clients Mm. and a load of people who came to me because I coach you Mm. So it's yeah, like two days a year are pretty, pretty awful. Quite intense. It's uh... <laughs> and not being there last year was, mm. you know, I was on the phone to people out there, like trying to f- just get any information, trying to find out. You know, you hear rumours on the internet that aren't true, but then they grow and grow, and mm. you know the people who are chatting chat really loud. So that becomes the truth all of a sudden. Mm. 
so you're trying to cover what information you guys are getting as well and what information's coming out as well as trying to keep track of points see what's to like chatting to you after every event obviously you're off your phone but like I was on the phone to Jordan like don't disturb him but how's Luke looking how's he doing mm. what like is there anything that we need and then trying to get Jordan to say stuff to you both and but like I need you to say it to them but don't disturb them mm. and I need you to judge if you should be saying it and that's a hard thing because <laughs> that's what Jordan does you know and yeah because you're not there so but it's different as well because Tom and I are both different athletes our mindsets are yeah. very different Tom I'll probably have a lot more communication with you yeah whereas me I'm more I need to be in that kind of complete zone. focus and complete zone um, when I'm not on my phone if, if I I always switch my phone off during competitions and listen to yeah. some music um, and and again that must be quite difficult as well that initial dynamic and I think we we talked about it last year you know the first show was was it Glasgow well it was Europe's first with you yes. me and you and yeah, then Europe's. with Tom and myself as a you as a was coach. Glasgow where I was there with both of you mm. So it's, that yeah, dynamic it's tricky. Is, yeah, it's a tricky one, and it's, it's it's a learning curve for us all, and especially because I think we've been together for longer. You know, obviously, like you said, Dan's. I need more of your time, and then then trying to coach Luke. You think you know? Does Luke's probably the same as Tom because mm. we're brothers? Yeah. So I'll do the same to him, and obviously that's maybe I don't work at the start a wee bit, and then once you then know him, you're kind of like this is easy. What mm. I've realised, like you need like more like total Guidance time, total, yeah. but the time that Luke needs, he re like that shorter mm. amount of time is as important mm. as like all the time with you. So mm. it's like we said at Glasgow, like you're asking me where your straps were and you were wearing them. But I could see like I think Who said that? Was that me? Yeah. Was it? Yeah. Oh I thought you were talking about Luke there. <laughs> oh of course it was you. But oh. I think like you were trying to get your deadlift suit on or something. Mm. So I was like I need to go and help him. Mm. So it's like there's less time in total that you need, but that time is vital. Yeah. And so that again, sorry, that again can cause people as to lose competition. It's not the training. It's like telling him to look uh, the wrong things or you know pestering too much. Like you know, you did, yeah. if you did what at the start, what you did to me to look, he would be like, his head would be like, what, what, what the hell? You know, mm. this is. This ain't working, you know, you're going out and doing all these different things to me. And then if you did what you did to look to me, it'd be the other way around. Yeah. Like, you know, training would be good, go to the comp, and you're like, wow, what's happening? Mm. So that must have been really hard as well to you to learn because you're not just coaching us, but you're also two complete different mindsets of and two different needs, you know. And A lot of, more different than I thought yeah. as well. Mm. Like getting into it, like I thought it'd be Easier a few shit. differences, but pretty similar, mm. but really different different sides of the skills you know like yeah it's quite strange because when we talk to Amy our psychologist obviously you chat yeah. with her quite a lot um, she talks a lot about Tom's concrete thinking and mine's a bit more up and down whatever but it's almost like when we come to the competition I'm more of like that concrete kind of this I is just, what will happen yeah this is the plan yeah and I just stick to it it's fine I'm lifting but then with Tom it's almost a little bit different you know you, you spend a bit more time yeah, but yeah. Kinda, um, which is, yeah, it's weird. Uh, strange, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's just, um, but like our partners, you know, Sinead and Cushy, that, that was a learning curve for mm -hmm. them as well, you know, how yeah. to deal, like, the amount of times I shout at Cushy, bless her. Um, backhand people as well. <laughs> but as even with you, like I said, even like the words, you know, like, I didn't realise until I caught with Amy that, like, saying words instead of sentences really yeah. helps me you know like saying like a competition isn't important that'll go into my head and be like well what the heck am I training this for you know just you know do that and then like you know it's like some sort of dumbo you know until someone's told me to be aggressive I never thought saying aggressive would help me yeah. channel that so it's all these weird things that until I, we talked to Amy and you understood that as well that it changed I, and that helped for worlds curve, and stuff it? as well mm. I mean well look what happened you know we worlds and then Europe's Britain's and then Glasgow yeah, and Rome, been so it's been, <laughs> that's just, I think, the training's a big thing, but I think out the gym, you know, the kind of mental state and learning as how to, you know, when I take those fits in the gym when I have a bad day and I can come back and then, you know, do yeah. it, that's really important and as well. And it's knowing, 
I think earlier on I'd almost be a bit too protective as well mm. where like you'd have you'd throw like a tantrum in the gym and I'd be like it's okay mate you can go home and like come back and we'll do this whereas like the other week where like dumbbell wasn't going well and you're like I'm going to stop the session I was like well drop out of the Arnold then mm. like if you're not going to train what's the point like you're uh-huh. the world's strongest man mm. it's time to act like it and you smash the rest of the session but other weeks it would have been a case of like drop everything back or go like it's there's no set answer mm. like it's got to change all the time depending what we're dealing with and I think after Europe's with you like we had a conversation I was like if I'm asking if you're okay I don't care how you feel mm. I need to literally know like are you injured mm-hmm. do we need to fix anything and it got to the point like the next competition walk towards you and like I'm okay like mm-hmm. sound I'll leave you alone mm-hmm. like it's not pest like I've got to do my job but also the other part of my job is not pestering you mm. or not leaving you alone and like getting everything balanced mm. it's, it's a fine it's a fine balance it's, 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 it's like you're balancing on that really fine edge sword and you're like oh it's teetering teetering <laughs> but it, it, it's working good now and, it, and I think that's what's important as well having you up for a week getting that dynamic and training as well you know yeah. um, because that changes all the time between between us you know it's um, we're brothers first and foremost but then when we go to competitions we're athletes and that's changing now you know we're both treating each other as athletes rather than brothers and then <clears throat> I'll probably end up you know maybe demanding a little bit more at you from yeah. you in certain competitions um, and likewise with Tom and that'll just it'll just keep going back and forth until one time one competition world's strongest man will just get that sweet spot and it'll be this is easy yeah and that's uh, I think that's the the goal for the best all. way of learning is in the training isn't it in training on like, even like I mean because was it Glasgow that we that was an, a, a bit of balance as well but it's better to do it there than it is in you know Europe's Britain's or the big comps so that's the ones you go right we'll do this giants live let's have a taster and see see yeah. you know and that's where you kind of was like right geez Luke doesn't need as much I need more in training as well even up here like you know you can be in it, but you never really need to go up to Luke because he knows until unless you go, right, this needs to change. But whereas me, you're kind of like, it's exactly the same, pre- I see it exactly the same training as they're doing the, in the event. Yeah. And I think it's good that it keeps in that kind of flow as well and you don't overdo it. And, you know, it's kind of like you're in the house when we don't need you and you just yeah. come up when we need you. You know, you're not always around us, which yeah, again is can. Trying to treat it more like work as well. Because mm. com- like, I love coming up here and it's nice and. Mm know previously stopping with you mm. and like it's really nice but i think it dilutes yeah. the work aspect of it a little bit because mm. if you know we train it's hard to have a really intense session and then go oh can i jump in your car and come back to your house now mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. having that separate space i think allows that real we're going to the gym and it's work mm-hmm. like it is work time yeah, and then we can analyse it and, and yeah. have our own thoughts initially and then kind of get back to kind of discuss things. But it's, I mean, obviously Tom and I are your favourite ever clients. Oh, yeah. No, no, no let's that, ask the question, right? Who's your favourite stokeman? I wasn't going to ask that question. All right, there you go, Ben. Well done. <laughs> but if you could choose, like, from all the strength, strong man, strong men, living or dead, whatever, who would you choose to kind of coach? Um, Brian, three years ago. Really? Yeah, when he left Nathan uh-huh. and went vertical, I think that was his last year to win Worlds. Mm. And I think it would have been amazing to be a part of that process. Um, I think now, even if he's at 100%, in a couple of years the sport's moved to where, you know, say you guys at 100%, it's just better than it's ever been. Mm. But I think a few years ago, getting hold of Brian would have been amazing. Or um, I mean, he's all, anybody's here, don't he? Like he's yeah. a blueprint of strongman right now, you know. And I mean, I get to work with Travis Hortmeyer, and mm. that blows my mind because he's off the telly. Like, I mean, look at the journey he's had as well, from dark places to. I mean, being even being at World's Trials, man, doesn't matter if you're in the final or not. Being yeah. there after what he's done is. But I'd love, like, like as a coach, if I could get him into one more final, mm. and just, you know bring Travis Hortmeyer back and just let him have like I feel like he never finished his career mm. it just sort of stopped 
but it never, you know, the last final, mm-hmm. the last push. Mm. Um, like, that would be amazing. So is that your big goal this year, obviously, as in the final, Travis in the final, and then just... I mean, to coach three guys in the final of World's Strongest Man would be, like, an all right year. Yeah, that would be a pretty cool one. And then I'll say the same answer I say to anyone who asks a question, is I'll take Stoltman one and two, mm. and you two can argue about <laughs> who goes where. But I mean, first of all, most before we got the Britain's Strongest Man coming up soon, don't we? And yes, that's going to be a, a great show. That's a focus just now, and on our nodes, then we can focus on the yeah, big one after that. Build. But like, yeah, we need to focus on obviously Britain's Strongest Man, which is going to be again a very, very good show. I think Stoltman you know, one and two. Uh, argue like. it's weird that again you know it's Britain's was in November and again it's only yeah. like you've had like a few months off and now it's back to training which is a weird weird thing but that's going to be a fun competition mm-hmm. I, think. I think this year suits me and Luke much better than last year you know I think judging by the events obviously the events are very good for us you know the really shield, good events the shield's really, Luke's really good at the shield as well so everything's going to be hopefully fingers crossed a one two there that'll be the mouse or something um, best start to the year but I think what you've done for us is um, go into competition and see that no events are bad for us now you know yeah. so that's what we've got to look at so whereas my deadlift before was bad I know it's getting a lot better it's the best it's ever been um, and I'm confident I'm excited to go into it and that's I think you've installed that belief in us that you know in years gone by maybe we'd see a competition and be like oh, it's not the best events for us um, yeah, but you go in now just thinking that take on any event, take on any one. Yeah, really, it yeah. doesn't matter. It doesn't matter yeah. what event. It if is. you want to win worlds, you've got to be good at what ten, ten events. Like some of them will be similar, but mm. you know, you know, my eyes. If you hit a PB in an event, you've yeah approved. You know, that's all you can really do in it. You know, you might not win fifteen, sixteen reps in deadlift, but if you've done one rep more than you did last year, then we're moving forward. <laughs> you're not moving backwards, are you? So. Ed Cohn said he became the best powerlifter of all time by accident. He just tried to beat his total every time. Didn't care where he placed, didn't care what happened. Mm. He'd just go and compete. Like In the States then, you'd be like every other week. And he'd just try and beat something, whether it's his total or his deadlift. Like Increase one lift or his total all the time. And then all of a sudden, he's the greatest powerlifter who ever lived. Mm. That's because he's not focusing on anyone else. He's not focusing on their things. He yeah. just goes in... Just work hard and get it. K more, that's me done, you know. Mm-hmm. Next year, K more. So. That's what I say to you like, I will train each of you to 100%. When we compete, I'm there to coach each of you as well as I can. But as soon as you step through that curtain, it's up to us, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's not on me anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's up to us to perform. It's, it's going to be good. You know, this year, you know, we've got obviously Martins Lisa's back, Mateus is back. Alexei Novikov smashing it last year. He was great. We fucking Mr. Consistent. He was. Um, he? But it'll be. I'm excited to go up against the likes of Martins. You know, the Martins yeah. is. Um, That's what we strive off is. I mean, like the best being against the best is to prove you are the best. That's what you want. Like Arnold's is going to be. Well, it's a start. Like, that's the best. That's going to be like the world's kind of lineup, isn't it? Yeah. Minus it's a few people. So if you can like mix it with them guys, then geez, you can mix it with everyone, can't you? See, when you look at other people training, like some Martins, like when I see Martins, I think it's very, he's very technical. He's very quite, he's quite intelligent. How he trains. Yeah. Do you look at that and kind of think similar stuff or um, look at everyone mm. and some stuff like without speaking out of turn? Mm. I think Martins' biggest issue is he's influenced by who he's training with. So he does a video one week and he's squatting high bar and really deep and he's mm. doing this and then he goes and trains with JF and he's squatting low bar, really wide stance mm. and then, you know, so he's, but he's a relatively young athlete in terms of, you know, he's had a big break mm. so I think he's still exploring what works for him mm. but for me, like, that's why I've come up with the knee wraps this week, it's like how we've wrapped your knees is that's it now. That's going to stay in until the Arnold. So you've got that consistency. But I think what he's doing in terms of like broadening training and like working with Squat University and the physios he's working with, that's I'm a massive fan of because mm. you've got to be able to move well. Mm. I think that's what's one thing I noticed about him in, in the Rogue Invitational. You know the 
the time he put into his warm-ups, the, the physio he had there, you know, and I, th I take my hat off to him, very professional in his, yeah. his performance, and I think that's something that we can take away from. Um, that professionalism, I think, has come through into our training now, and we have Squat University, he's given us warm-ups and stuff. <laughs> mobility. mobility for, like, um, with Sean, obviously yeah. you've told us to do mobility for years, we've off. I think uh, I've had it in I've had it in my plan for three years. Yeah. I didn't even do it before Wales last year. We only started it uh, about a month ago, so geez. Yeah. I went from not being able, holding my breath when I sleep to now not because my chest is more open because of mobility. Yeah. I learned that from Dana. <laughs> so you know how you get sleep apnea and stuff and like you know you, you can snore and hold your breath. Then you just stop breathing when you sleep because your chest mm. is crushed in. When you do mobility you stretch it out more mm. and it it helps you kinda breathe more. <laughs> So, uh, no, that is like a straight like no, you I choke know. yourself to sleep. I mean, probably. I, I know what you're in saying, terms. It's, yeah. in, it's not. It's <laughs> I not know the words described. Yeah. It's not described in that terms, but you know what I mean. But yeah, yeah. mobility is. Yeah. Hundred percent mobility helps you. You don't really realise until um, you actually do it again. You know, I go. I moan every week about doing stuff like that, but then surely not. You adapt when you when you actually do it for four or five weeks, and then start training again. You're like, wow. This is why we do this kind of stuff, you know. So yeah. it's the stuff you don't want to train. Is the stuff that helps you get stronger, basically. I right? think the key is that we're just trying to create no ultimate runs. packages of strongman, mm. no weak events, trying to prevent injury, trying to get long careers as well. Yeah, longevity is the key, isn't it? and the yeah, only way you're going to do that is looking after your body. Yeah, you can't compete if you're injured. So we just want to keep moving, keep getting stronger, and. Yeah, perform as well as we can because keep getting those uh, gold, gold, gold shiny things. Yeah, the big, big shiny trophies. No, um, the gold ones only. Mm. I'll use them to cut my hair in as well. <laughs> that's why I keep missing the back. Uh, I can't see the back in the world's trophy. Well, that's. I mean, it's. It sounds very easy when you put it into that kind of context. You know, it's all, all we have to do is like follow your plan. Then we do our mobility. We do our recovery. Um, Nutrition's then, on point with yeah. Nathan. Like, it's not hard. Mm. But it's you can make it really, hard for yourself, yeah. basically, yeah. Mm. But it's uh, once every once you tick those boxes, everything just falls into place, and it's quite a that progression is very apparent then, you know. And, and it's a job in it at the end of the day, you know. Like it is work. No, like I mean, like you know, you go into if you have, Friday, if we had it, like work. if you're offshore, you do your job properly. So why just because we're not like actual physically in work, why wouldn't we? Mm. You know, follow what we have to do to be the best at setting. Yeah, but because then gets easier, you can go like, I'm not going to do this today. I don't want to. But then that yeah, then affects you the whole set. week. You know, just one. Oh, set. shut up! Right. Anyway, <laughs> so speaking. Oh, so we've got training today. We have a big event session. Yes, it's the end of the week. It's Friday. We've got about a seven-hour event session. Yeah, uh, it's a big old. Oh, uh, <laughs> if Dan has anything to do, I think it'll be twenty-four hours. Right. Jeez. I think so, how easy comps are going to be there. Yeah, just, well, that's, what, that's what I'm telling myself. If if I can, if we can train on a Friday to this level and then be okay for deadlifts again Monday, the Britons then straight into Arnold's won't be an issue. Not an issue. At all, so, no. like, I'm very confident in what we're doing. Our training's going really well. Events, I'm really buzzing for events. So, yeah, we're going to go off, get prepped for that. Thank you so much for coming on. Number three of the Sultan podcast. Much oh, appreciated. Thank you for having me on. Thank you for having me up here as well. It's, Anytime. It's a pleasure. I said we were forced into it, but yeah, you're more than welcome. <laughs> it's good. I now think you're even more mental than I did before. So good. That's it. <laughs> right. Awesome. Thank you so much again, Dan. Hope you guys enjoyed the third Stoughton podcast with our coach, Mr. Minaji. <laughs> Dan Hipkiss. Thank you again, Dan. Thank you, man. Guys, have a great weekend. Stay safe, smile and stay spicy. And don't you dare forget to ring that little bell. Ding ling 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 ling. Decent. Oh.